I'm not going to lie, this no is where worries. we get into a I'll roller coaster to quality for the main series. The game series from here goes up and down like a toilet seat. It goes from okay to trash to really good to a train wreck within a few releases. So let's start off with the first sequel in the series in Final Fantasy X-2. Released around two years later, Final Fantasy X-2 is the sequel to the smash hit Final Fantasy X and is the first sequel to a game in the main franchise. It was worked on pretty much by the same people who worked on the previous game. It would also be the last Final Fantasy game that Hironobu Sakaguchi would be at the helm for since he took the majority of blame for the financial failures that were Square Pictures, Final Fantasy Spirits Within, and pretty well led to the merger of Squaresoft and Enix. This would also be the first main game in the series released under the name Square Enix. Now bear in mind between Final Fantasy X and X2, you had a few games come out between them under their new name Square Enix. You had All-Star Pro Wrestling 3, which was Japan only, the remake of Final Fantasy Adventure called Sword of Mana, Dragon Guard, a Dragon Quest spin-off that became Rocket Slime Adventures for Game Boy Advance, another Dragon Quest spin-off that was a plug-and-play TV game, a remake of Front Mission for PlayStation 1, which was Japan only, among others. So these guys had their feet Thanks. wet, and we were close. anticipating their next game in the a main little? Final Fantasy series. The plot picks up a fair bit after the events of Final Fantasy here, After Yuna sees now. a spear that contains footage of a man who looked a lot like Titus, she then goes off to become a spear hunter in the hopes of Titus still being alive. Along with her joins Riku and newcomer Pain, who looks like everything bad about goth stereotypes. The plot picks up a fair bit after the events of Final Fantasy X. After Yuna sees a spear that contains footage of a man who looked a lot like Titus, she then goes off to become a spear hunter in the hopes of Titus still being alive. Along with her joins Riku and newcomer Pain, who looks and acts like everything bad about goth stereotypes. My biggest problem with the plot is that it's as cheesy as one of those animes that brought to North America for girls who are around 9 to 15. Shows like Card Capture, Sailor Moon, and so forth. I'm not saying it's like one of those where it's meant for teenage girls and it becomes something for guys to get their rocks off to. It's just cheesy enough not to be taken seriously despite it having some serious scenes in it. The graphics are a cop out. They had more than a year, and the game streams half as cash. The game recycles old landscapes, areas, monsters, characters, and even town. It doesn't even look like they touched up the graphics at all. Sure, you might find a few new levels, but everything from Final Fantasy X was reused here with almost nothing new. With that said, it's still a decent looking game. When you look at when it came out, it was considered an incredible achievement that made us feel like we needed to move on from the PlayStation 1 and get a PlayStation 2. More than a year later, yeah, it's a bit dated. The thing is that on a scale from 1 to 10, I would give it a 7. IO is okay at best. This is definitely one of the weaker main entries in the series as far as music is concerned. There's a lot more cheesy girl band, pop music, and can and will drive some people nuts. Not to say all of it is bad. There are some good tracks such as Final Boss theme, a track called A Thousand Words was used fairly is. effectively where it was used and so the town themes are pretty good. The problem is that I have, if you're going to go into a direction where it's Charlie Angels, level corny, then go all the way. The few tracks I really like feel out of place and make me wish they were in another game. As for the voice acting, it's worse than Final Fantasy X because of the main characters and the really mediocre plot. I think what held the entire plot together was the strength of characters like Kimari, Oron, and so forth, along with how the world was built from the perspective of Tears. Now that the more serious aspects of the game have been removed, I think that the game really resorts to being a bubbly pop music. Now you can say with the big bad guys from Final Fantasy X and are dead, people would change and be more carefree. I would agree to some extent. The problem is that it seems like everyone has taken all the goofy pills and what amounts to is a world that's about as cheesy as if it was set in the world of Charlie's Angel. Another minor problem is that we went through time of really bad lip syncing and Final Fantasy X-2 so bad at points that it's almost horrified. Sure, for the most part, it's handled fairly well. There are scenes where it looks like one of those early Hong Kong action films. It doesn't happen that often, but it's often enough that it's like a battle wound. It's just so glaring that it fades with you where you think about it. The gameplay is okay at best and I cry out for help at worst. If you ever want a textbook example of a game that the project manager wanted out, Final Fantasy X-2 is part. Before anything, the game's main story has a cool new game plus feature. It allows you to go back and play through the game again in case you missed out on any of the side quests or story in the game which plays into the ending and if you get 100% you get the perfect ending. This was rarely seen and I think it was a nice touch to add replay value to the game. My only issue with it is that you have to play through the entire game again to get the best ending and it's very minor. Now the majority of the gameplay is combat. Combat is very much like older Final Fantasy games. It's an act 
Time Battle System, or ATB. It's a fundamentally sound and looks fairly effective. The main differences between this and other games is first, there are certain moves that take up more time to activate or charge. Some moves like straight out attacks and items take less time than casting spells. There's also a countdown to some extent to this. Certain classes that on standard attacks take a lot more time for you to get your next attack. This is a nice little change of pace from the standard be quick or be dead kind of mentality that usually an active time battle brings along. The other thing that makes this game different is how it uses the classes. You get these garment grids that hold a certain number of classes. You can slot in what classes you have unlocked into these slots depending on what you want to focus on and what suits the situation best. You can also change classes on the fly with the situation. Again, another nice touch that really isn't used in the series until Final Fantasy 13. Where the game screws up and further makes it feel like a rush job is that the system is easily exploitable. Once you get the white and black mage classes, you can lock fights into a standstill and unlock every ability in that class without fighting enemies. Just go find an elemental enemy, cast the element he absorbs, have the white mage use a 0 MP healing move, and keep doing this until you got no MP on everybody, then run. All the AP, which is points used to get different moves while attacking, and moves unlocked, you get to keep because you get 1 AP for every move used. Once you get auto kill moves later on, fights become pretty much point. Now, you may say there are broken combos in other Final Fantasy games, and yes, there are. The problem I have is that you can find this in under 5 hours into the game, while others, like Final Fantasy 6 or 7, you have to have like 30, 40 it's hours there. in before you even find these absolutely broken combos. It wasn't such a rush it's job to some extent, the garment grid could have been a lot way. better than it is. Now, as for the rest of the game, it's lured with many games that pad out the game even longer. There's a level where you get to kill hordes of monsters to get a high score, which to me is mind numbingly repetitive. There's a level where you get to play the stiffest feeling version of Simon Says I ever played, and so forth. Probably out of all these games, the best is Spear Break. Compared to everything else, it's a godsend. On any other game, it'd be considered minor. The game has you try and use numbered coins that add up to the total that is displayed in the middle. You get more points than time for finding the same number coins that add up to it over and over. It's only played once, and I wish they expanded off this simple idea. Yet, the worst of them all is the football game. I hate it so much, I'd sooner call it quits than ever figuring it out. I never figured out how to win games in it because of this reason. The game tried to fit a problem with it where you could score one goal and hide behind the goalie for the rest of the game. Now, you may ask, by taking you out of the action, making you the head coach, and only allowing you to give different tactical orders. Now, think of how dumb this would be. It would take 90% of the fun out of board and leaving the game to the pitiful artificial intelligence. Oh wait, EA did that later on with NFL head coach and that lasted two or three years. Wow, you think doing this kind of crap would frown upon, but nope, dummy see, dummy do. Not to mention, the game pretty much amounts to you going out, finding the best players in the game and using them. Hey, if you can do it without this tactic, good for you. I'm not the smartest when it comes to this game. Now, I will say this, not everything is bad in the game. Combat is fundamentally solid and it's an okay story. The problem is, is that at the end of the day, no gameplay game feels like a rush job, and at this point, there are no blue seconds that you want it out. You would soon leave after 10 2 and eventually would start up another company called Mistwalker that would create Blue Dragon and the classic known as Lost Odyssey. Overall, Final Fantasy X 2 is an okay game. Graphics are solid and there are solid elements to it. The problem is that this is, in every sense of the word, a rush job. While there is a solid amount of value in the game, it needed more time for it to be a good to great game. You can pick up for around 15 bucks on PS2, and if that's your only option, then go ahead and pick it up. Now, if you have a choice, then I would have to say go pick up the HD remaster of this with Final Fantasy X on PlayStation 3 or the PlayStation Vita. Those are the international versions, which added a lot of content. As it stands, I give the PlayStation 2 version of Final Fantasy X2 a 6 out of 10. 